Hey guys, so uh, today's conversation is going to be just uh, me getting uh, some thoughts off my shoulders that I've previously talked about sometimes in my other videos, but I wanted to kind of uh, bring it all together uh, after this morning's uh, <laughs> crazy surprise of buying a premium Lamborghini Countach from Jay Leno's garage and uh, finding out that it was seven freaking dollars. So I was like, what the fun brownie. So anyway... Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, diecast uh, collecting in general, about different nuances that we all go through, uh, concerns that we have, you know, about resellers, about uh, changing our minds about if we're collecting main lines or uh, hoarding things, the difference between all of that, about minimalism, all sorts of stuff like that uh, connected to diecast and diecast collecting in general. So if you find that interesting... Um, let's go inside and talk about it. Let's go. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? Nas here. Um, okay, so you saw the thumbnail, uh, so you know exactly what I'm going to be talking about. So, um, let's jump right into it. Um, first of all, uh, I've been collecting Hot Wheels for my entire life. Um, you know, there would be a few years where I wouldn't actively collect. Uh, for example, like when I went to college or uh, when I was uh, younger and was in like relationships and stuff. Um, <clears throat> or when I would uh, kind of dive deep into other interests of collecting. Like uh, I've collected uh, Power Rangers stuff some transformers, action figures, statuettes, um, art toys, which I still collect. I've always collected for fa uh, Fast and Furious, of course. Uh, I've always collected for um, Back to the Future stuff, other nostalgia things that I was just really into. <sighs> I guess uh, vintage toys. Um, Oh yeah, I've collected heavily in uh, retro video games, uh, you know, Nintendo, NES, Super uh, SNES, uh, Sega Genesis, uh, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, Xbox, uh, the original Xbox, can't say 1 because that's different, um, <laughs> but yeah, um, and I'm still into all of that, but... Um, Many of you know that I've gone through like a big uh, minimalist thing that I went through. I'm still going through that. It's not something that's like a phase or anything. It's a, it's more of a state of mind. You realize some things and, uh, you know, I personally realized that, uh, you know, having too much crap is having too much crap, man. It doesn't matter if you're loving your crap or not. It, it still really doesn't matter because in the end... When there's entirely too much of that stuff, it it kind of has the opposite effect on you, you know? It's not, uh, I don't know. It's no longer something that's, like, good, I don't know, to me. I'm only talking about me. Uh, I'm sure there's some of you that watch and you're completely happy with your crazy huge collections and they make you happy and stuff like that, which is beautiful. I'm very happy for you, actually. But, as far as I'm concerned... Um, it kind of turned into like, you know, just an overwhelming feeling. So uh, that's kind of like why <laughs> I, I got rid of a lot of my uh, collections, plural, different things that I've collected. Uh, that's why I stopped collecting uh, Hot Wheels. We're coming back to Hot Wheels now because that's the topic of the day. But uh, I have to set it up because I can't just be like, hey guys, what's up with Hot Wheels prices? Like, it all stems, <laughs> it all stems and branches off and in, in the same vein, you know what I mean? So I uh, just wanted to give you a little bit of my background and, you know, the stuff that I've collected and collect and all that sort of stuff. So, oh man. So as far as Hot Wheels go, um, yeah, I've collected Hot Wheels my whole life. Uh, I've collected a uh, 118 scale, as you can see hanging up on my uh, wall over there. I've downsized that. That used to be all of my walls. I used to have nothing but 118 scales and a whole bunch of uh, like Hot Wheels that would be like in a bin and stuff like that. 
Uh, I still have my childhood collection behind me there. Uh, I've even uh, weeded out some of my childhood collection castings because, dude, it's fine. <laughs> the memories are in here. So uh, even if, uh, you know, I saved all of the ones that I have memories with that I'm like holding and I'm like, oh, I remember holding this with my like five-year-old hand and, you know, when I would play in the sand with it or whatever. So I definitely kept those. But um, so, yeah, when I uh, really got into the whole uh, minimalist thing, I'm not like a minimalist. I'm not, you know, walking around with nothing and there's nothing on my walls. Obviously, I still have collections of things. I still love stuff like that. I'll always be a collector. <sighs> but um, the thing is, uh, once I started getting into the minimalist thing and started reading books about it, about stoicism, minimalism, all sorts of stuff like that, I got into that about four or five years ago. And steadily, um, if you look at my uh, playlists of my collection room tours, you'll see the evolutions of things. I've had some epic collections. I've found everything that you would look for, you know, to find stuff, <laughs> you know, for your collection, like the rare things, the expensive things, the valuable things. Uh, I've hunted all of it down, so I can, I check that off the box, like, uh, I'm a really good hunter, I can find it. Um, you know, um, be it going to stores, or looking through connections, or buying a collection, and then selling off the rest of the collection, keeping what I want out of that collection, uh, then putting the money back into the collection. Like, I've I've tried every method of collecting. And uh, so, yeah, as far as Hot Wheels goes, um, I started collecting Hot Wheels, like, hardcore again, where I would go out hunting all the time, uh, about three to four years ago. It was probably, like, 2018-ish. I was watching all sorts of uh, YouTube channels uh, that I just really enjoyed, and... Uh, uh, based on Hot Wheels, not pig hunting videos. I did watch some of those, but uh, mostly it was like Bare Metal HW, Diecast Resurrection, um, Marty's Matchbox Makeovers, um, Danny's uh, Danny's Disasters or Danny's Diecast Disasters. Um, anyway, I watched a whole bunch of stuff like that. On top of uh, retro video game stuff that I watched. And uh, those two worlds are very much uh, connected because it's about nostalgia. So the retro video game hunter channels, I watched a lot of those because uh, I was uh, very heavily involved in flea market stuff where I would resell stuff because of my toy collecting. So I really dove deep into the flea market thing and started, you know, uh, buying, reselling, stuff like that of vintage and retro stuff, not new stuff. So, like a lot of people do these days, especially. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so uh, I was really into the um, customizing and art of people that use these things, uh, like Hot Wheels, to make art and make customs out of it. I wasn't really, like, obsessed with, like, oh, new stuff's coming out of Hot Wheels. I better buy it. Oh, this new stuff's coming out. I gotta buy it. I gotta buy it. It was more like, I want to learn how to do this better, <laughs> and how to do this for myself. I, I'm really enjoying, like, techniques and stuff people do. And I learned a lot out of that. I've made a bunch of customs. Most of them I either sold or just gotten rid of, like, giving them away to people. Uh, a lot of them I put back into, like, blisters and put, like, one of my nostalgic custom sticker on and hung back up in stores for people just to take or to buy them again for a dollar. Um, but, and, uh... And I really got into heavy, into customizing uh, about uh, a little bit, yeah, about two years ago when I worked for a powder coat company, I started um, bringing in Hot Wheels and uh, stripping the paint off of them and powder coating them. And that took off very well. I made like over 500 uh, uh, powder coat customs. And again, um, gave away a whole lot of them. I probably gave, gave away at least 150 just for free. Um, then I sold a whole bunch at toy shows and stuff like that on, on my YouTube channel. Then I sold a whole bunch later, uh, earlier this year, 2022, when the war in Ukraine started, I sold a whole bunch for the auctions uh, to benefit Ukraine on my channel here. And um, yeah, so what I'm getting at here is um i i really slowed down going to stores to collect to buy for myself 
I was still making a ton of YouTube videos where I go and pig hunt and I still picked up a ton of Hot Wheels or some, but most of those would either either be used to, to be sold at the auctions over this last year um, for Ukraine, or I would hunt for my friends. They, they like not find stuff in their state or their county, their area, and um, I'd just buy it and send it to them to have. And uh, that means a little more to me to make someone happy, you know? So, um, <sighs> but still, I'm still a collector. I still collect Hot Wheels. I prefer customs from other customizers. But there are castings I enjoy, um, and I do prefer like non-Hot Wheels nowadays. I'm kind of more into Mini GT, Tarmac Works, like the, the higher end, uh, slightly more expensive ones, uh, highly more detailed and uh, just better quality overall. And that's what gets me to today's topic. We're 10 minutes into the video, and now we're going to start about the topic. So the thing is... <sighs> With the prices of Hot Wheels, I guess, you know, there's inflation or whatever going on. And I know that um, in 2020, a whole bunch of people started collecting everything again. Uh, a whole bunch of uh, scalpers, you know, resellers started rising because there was a lot more demand for people because they're sitting at home. They want to look at some kind of a collection. They want something fun to do. So a lot more collectors, I'll stick to Hot Wheels, a lot more collectors for Hot Wheels um, started to show up. And, um, you know, Hot Wheels was having trouble uh, meeting the demand for them. And uh, that's why scalpers were there, because they would be able to get to the stores, buy the stuff people want, and then scalp it on eBay or whatever. <sighs> So that became really popular and people are started noticing, oh my god, there's money to be made here. So people started doing that and uh, Hot Wheels was uh, kind of struggling because of, uh, you know, 2020 situation and uh, their factories were kind of closing, not closing down, but slowing down production. The, the supply was really dwindling down and then that thing with the barge going sideways happened and then the thing with all the barges that were trapped somewhere in the ocean that weren't allowed to go somewhere a whole bunch of crap happened <laughs> so uh yeah but anyway with that being said like hot wheels has always been like a dollar car main lines you know the one dollar cars and uh that kind of made uh, collecting them easy, you know, people are like, oh, I'll just spend like five, ten bucks and I got a whole bunch of cars already. Um, and, you know, a lot of people, before they know it, within a month or two, they already have enough Hot Wheels to cover their walls with. So, uh, and then they start to crave the harder to find. There's stuff that came out a few years before they got into collecting. And that's how all of that got really crazy. And now, <laughs> at the end of 2020, uh, 2022 now, um, you know, where uh, December is uh, like a day away, <laughs> so last month of uh, 2022, and diecast uh, collecting, diecast communities have grown huge, man. And uh, to be honest with you, it's it's getting a little like too crazy, you know. And those of you that have watched my videos before, you, you know that I've already told you that I'm done collecting mainlines, and I have been, actually, for at least, I think, this whole year, I've only ended up buying for myself, not for the auction or for my friends, just for myself, I think I bought less than 10 mainline Hot Wheels, and I probably have less now, because after a while, I'm like, I don't need this. <laughs> and and other than that uh the main lines that i wanted would be like a special one that's in a five pack like uh the dots and um truck from kaido house or uh like an rlc casting that I, that i really wanted or um you know like a new casting that came out like just came out the premium casting the pantera um but anyway that's premium we'll get to that <laughs> so Oh my god, guys. Um, so, like I said, it's there's a ton of collectors now. And uh, just a little side note that I keep making and stressing this point. A lot of people, when they go to uh, a Target or a Walmart or whatever, uh, they'll show up and there's nothing there. Or all the good car castings are gone. They're like, damn scalpers! 
I, I keep stressing this. Yeah, there are scalpers, and yeah, it's kind of messed up, but they're completely in the right to scalp or do whatever the hell they want. They have money, store has stuff, they buy stuff, they can do whatever the hell they want with their stuff now. Sadly, it sucks, but that's how it is. You gotta just accept it, man. But that's not my point. Like, whatever. Who cares about scalpers, man? Um, the, my, my, my point is there's a ton of collectors, like I told you before, for different reasons. And uh, two years ago, you could still go into stores and pick out stuff. It was way easier to find supers. It was way easier to find all of that. Not because there were less scalpers. Scalpers were still there. There was also less of them. But uh, the thing is, um, there's a lot more collectors. So if a collector goes to a Target in the morning and they're there before you, they're gonna buy all the best stuff. They're a collector, just like you would <laughs> go to a Target and you're first to the pegs, just like I do. You're like, oh my god, there's the super, there's a regular treasure hunt. Like, personally, I don't collect treasure hunts, regular treasure hunts, so I leave them behind unless it's like a Mustang or something that I think is cool. And I'm gonna, not gonna take all of them unless one of my friends wants them. That's another thing with collectors. If your friend wants uh, stuff, usually a collector has at least a couple of friends, two, three, maybe even four or more, that also collect Hot Wheels. So they all look out for each other, right? So when they go to that store and they see all those pegs full, they're like, oh, well, Phil wants all of the, like, Phil collects Dotsons. And, and then, like, Mike collects uh, Lamborghinis, uh, this guy collects Fords, this guy collects Skylines, you know what I mean? So they'll pick up stuff for themselves, one or two for me, one to open, one to keep in the thing, that's already two, and then his friend needs two of that, and his other friends needs two of that, and maybe that other friend has another friend, and he's like, hey man, get me like four if you ever find them. It's collectors, man, there's a ton of us. <laughs> so, uh, yeah point made on that i think so you guys need to remember that before you just go into a store and you're like oh damn scalpers maybe but you don't freaking know so judge not lest you be judged first <laughs> i guess i don't know but you don't know i don't know you don't know who was there before you scalper or a collector you don't know but there's a ton of collectors so they buy stuff up bro it is what it is, man. You gotta, you know, if you want to do that, you gotta make time or you gotta ask one of your collector friends if they're looking for stuff to pick you something up if, if they get lucky with it. And that's exactly what I just talked about. So, yeah, come down with the scalper shaming, man. I don't know how many of them there are, but uh, with that being said, also, uh, <laughs> a lot of collectors these days also resell. Yeah, they're, I don't know if I would call that scalping, it's more of a reselling, because they know that once they get to it, they're gonna get everything so they can sell it to some of their friends or people on social media or their Hot Wheels group on Facebook or Instagram, whatever, man, they'll buy this stuff and they're not gonna, like, do scalper prices, they'll actually do fair prices to help out people in their community. Nothing wrong with that either. I I have tons of friends like that. They're collectors, but they also pick stuff up to be able to help out their friends and, you know, maybe make five, ten bucks off of it for their trouble, for the gas money, for the fact that they actually found it, you know, like, and they're actually saving you money because you don't have to go to eBay and buy it from scalpers. <sighs> okay, so there's a lot of that going on and uh, people need to chill. Um, there's a lot of people that preach and preach, oh, those damn scalpers, and they themselves sit there in their collection room with a ton of stuff behind them on the wall, and they're like, oh yeah, you know, I picked up a bunch of stuff, if anyone wants one of these, hit me up. What do you think that means, hit me up? Does it mean like, hey man, hit me up, I'll give you one for free? No! <laughs> it means they'll sell it to you, or they'll trade it to you. So, simmer down now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I just kind of wanted to get all of this off my chest because, like, I've just... This has been happening for a long time. And now it's a lot worse because... Um, kind of what I uh, got in the beginning of this video, I wanted to mention something. I went to uh, Target this morning. <laughs> don't really care, um, Jay Leno or whoever Leno. Uh, don't care about the David Letterman collection car set here. 
<laughs> but uh, I do care about this Lamborghini. And from what I understand, this Lambo is a, a new casting that they made for Hot Wheels. So, yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure that they uh, made a new, like, tool or whatever, new casting for this Lambo. So, I don't have a premium Lamborghini, and I saw this set today. Uh, of course, there were no chases. The, there was no black Lamborghini. That's a whole other topic with chases and, and all that stuff. It's like, calm down, man. You're literally buying it because it's a chase, because of its value, not because you like it in black. I prefer this in red because I can see it in my collection. Uh, you know what I mean? But anyway, my problem with this was uh, what's been happening this whole year. In 2022, prices started going up. <laughs> So, um, yeah, uh, at least, I think pretty much a year ago, 2021, premiums were still like 5 20 you know, 5 bucks. The year before that, I think they were even less than that. They were like 4 80 like close to 5 but still under 5 <sighs> So I go to Target this morning. I find this. I'm super happy. There were two of these red ones. I picked the one with the best um, tempo, the best uh, art that wasn't, you know, all skewed or messed up. You know, no errors, thanks. Um... I go to the checkout, and uh, here's a picture. <laughs> this was $7.01. So, I can technically say it was over $7, but one cent's a one cent. So, 7 bucks for a premium Hot Wheels. So, now they are getting much closer to... I mean, I can go and get a Kaido House Mini GT, which is highly detailed, made by a Hot Wheels designer, who is also an artist, who now designs his own stuff with uh, Mini GT, uh, June and I. And uh, he makes all the Datsuns, all sorts of stuff that he designs. And uh, you can pick those up for like 20 25 bucks. So, premium car that's made in mass distribution and mass numbers is seven dollars. Um, now, I'm not complaining about that it's like, oh my god, seven dollars, that's like an hour's pay. For some people, it is actually. So, uh, <laughs> you know, um, I'm not saying like, oh my god, money, spend, spend all the money you want. If you have the money, spend it. But if I have a choice between this or spending, like, so Mini GT, the Kaido House, yeah, those are 20 25 bucks each. But um, you can also get a Tarmac or other Mini GT. If you go to, like, One Stop Diecast, uh, you can pick up uh, premium brands that sell all of these castings that are premium with, with a ton of separate separate parts that, you know with uh, clear headlights and uh, everything, antennas sticking out, rubber wheels, all sorts of stuff. You can pick those up $10, $15. So, what, because it's made by Hot Wheels? <laughs> so I'd rather spend, spend, I don't know, 4 5 even $10 more for like a really good high quality piece for my collection because in a big scheme, scheme of things, I love cars, man. I like cars. I love car automotive design. I love nostalgia for these cars. I really enjoy how they look. Not because it says Hot Wheels on it. It's cool if you're a Hot Wheels, like, brand loyalty. I love Hot Wheels. I love Hot Wheels, too. I think they're cool. But like I said, I stopped collecting mainlines because they're a dollar car for kids. And uh, it's fine. I still have some <laughs> that I really like. I have my childhood collection. But as a, an adult man, I guess, I don't know. <sighs> yeah, I've been swaying more towards the other companies, more premium companies. Because if this thing's $7, it's probably going to be 8 or $9 in a year or two. Uh, because I hear Hot Wheels is going through some stuff right now, too. So, uh... It's almost guaranteed that they're going to raise prices. And mainlines are $1.50 now in my area. 
So it's not a dollar car anymore either. Like I'm, I'm buying all these uh, main lines for kids in Ukraine right now. I'm doing a toy drive here on this channel. And uh, thank you everyone that's sending stuff. I really appreciate that. <sighs> but they're, you know, two for three bucks. And, uh, you know, I'll go there, buy like 20 of them. And it's like, holy crap, man. That was like 50 bucks. I mean, a little less. Than, you know what I mean? Like, it's not really, uh, I don't know, what's the point of getting, you know, kind of mass-produced, kind of technically lower-quality car uh, that's meant to be a toy <laughs> and spend all that money on it if you can just be patient, get something high-quality for a little bit more, but you have something cool that you, you can have on your display. And that's where my collection's heading. I've slowly started replacing. I used to have a huge Datsun 510 and Datsun 510 wagon collection in there. I got rid of most of those ca castings from Hot Wheels, like even premium ones. Um, and now I'm collecting Junimai's uh, Mini GT stuff. Not every single one. I don't need every single color variant either. You might, that's fine. Like I said before, I'm talking about me, guys, so don't get, like, offended. I'm just telling you how I feel about this. This is my thing. These are my feelings, my emotions, what I think about this whole situation with collecting and how minimalism changed me as well. You know, for a lot of you, this might be, like, therapy. You really love going hunting. I love hunting. Like, I still go hunting. That's why I really enjoy... Uh, hunting for the auctions for ukrainian kids and stuff in ukraine because it gives me a reason to go hunt and hell man if i find a super i'll i still collect supers mostly mustang supers or whatever but there's a lot of supers that i really don't care about and i found a bunch this year most of them went to the auction to raise money for ukraine because i'm like okay i mean <laughs> audi wagon okay uh, some of you might love audi again uh, just calm down <laughs> Uh, we all have our own personal tastes and preferences in, in automotive uh, design and loyalties as well. So like I said, uh, first and foremost, I'm an automotive fan. I used to be a street racer. I used to belong to uh, Shelby, uh, Shelby Dodge uh, Automotive Club where uh, we would go um, autocross and stuff competitively. That was a ton of a ton of fun. So like I was always around cars, around racers, around racetracks, around street racetracks. That stopped after Fast and Furious came out because that became way too popular. That seems to be like when I get out of things, when things get way too popular and I, I'm just like, well, <laughs> eh. <laughs> uh, what's unique about this, you know? So yeah, man, uh, this video is inspired by me going peg hunting. I didn't even go peg hunting today, man. I needed to buy a bunch of water for the house, bought, bought some stuff to eat, to have food, and uh, I saw this set hanging there, and I'm like, oh man, that's a cool Lambo, man. I really want to, you know, have that in my collection. And now I'm like, uh, I'm regretting it. It's a nice casting. I love it. I'm going to keep it, at least for now. But, uh, you know, I'd much rather go to a different company that has a really highly detailed version of this Lamborghini Countach, right? Yeah of this Countach, and uh, I'd rather have that on my display, so that when I come up to my really cool display cases over there, all the cars are gonna look even better, because they're highly detailed, it looks more like something special. That's another reason why I love customs, when people customize um, mainline cars, that's why I collect them. Half of one of these cases is nothing but customs from different customizers in the diecast community. <sighs> so yeah, man. These prices are nuts, man. Oh, yeah, and since this is 7 at Target, um, I went to Acme, right? Um, it's in one of my peg hunting videos. I went to Acme, uh, which is a local grocery store, just like every state has grocery stores. Ever heard of it? <laughs> grocery store? Anyway, um, so I went there, and their premium cars are like 12 bucks. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, what? <laughs> 12 bucks? And they're just hanging there, man. I'm just like, where does this end, dude? You know? So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, my, my point isn't like, oh, Hot Wheels sucks. I love Hot Wheels. I love them, even the main lines. But, dude, you got to pick your poison, bro. And uh, I, I think I realized that... If I'm going to collect stuff and accumulate stuff, 
it needs to be high quality or at least higher quality than toys so uh that's one of the reasons i uh stopped collecting i uh, like power ranger megazords the big robots ah <sighs> check out those old collection tour videos but this whole room here was nothing but big old glass cases filled with awesome badass megazords from every season i had every version of the dragon zord the megazord you know from the original series now I'm down to one uh, high-quality metal Dragon Zord. It's not vintage, but it's freaking badass. Um, you know, and I have a bunch of other stuff, like autographed Green Ranger things. Uh, Jason David Frank just passed away, and I was like, man, why did I get rid of some of this Green Ranger stuff? But then after, you know, a, a day or two, I'm like, because I, that's not where my memories are. They're in here, you know? And I have one thing to represent that I'm happy with it. So that's kind of the same thing here, man. I Just like a lot of you guys, collectors, I used to collect every color variant for that particular casting. I have to have every color of the rainbow for it. Every wheel variant, rim variant, base variant. That one's from Malaysia. That one's from Hong Kong. That one's from your mom's house. <laughs> so you guys know what I mean. Like... A lot of you, uh, you know, when I started my minimalism thing, um, I don't know why I'm doing this because I, I did start doing that and applying those principles. So that's why it's so easy for me to get rid of some things. <sighs> and uh, yeah, there's some things I regret getting rid of. But um, after a while, I really, not really, because I'm like, I took a picture of it. I have memories with it. It's, it's just a thing. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, so yeah. So yeah, this whole crazy over half an hour long video that I just made, uh, hopefully you guys uh, got some value out of it. It was all inspired by this stupid Kuntash <coughs> <coughs> that I picked up today. Um, yeah. Yeah, let me know um, down in the comments right under this video. Um, let me know what you think uh, about some of these topics that I raised about resellers and scalpers how it's different about how the fact that there's way more collectors now uh, let me know what you think about the uh, price raises uh, inflation or whatever what are your thoughts let me know if you've been downsizing your collection or stopping collecting altogether um there are some things i stopped collecting altogether you know like uh Hot Wheels? I don't know, man. That's a lifelong journey. Uh, you know, you accumulate it, you get rid of it. Uh, some things stay forever in your collection. Some things are very easily let go. Because once you acquire it, you get that feeling. And then a week or two later, when you go through your boxes that you haven't looked in for like five years, um, you're like, oh yeah, I have all this. <laughs> What's the point of that? You bought it to put it in a box, you know? So yeah, um, this whole year I've been uh, either going to the flea market, selling off most of my uh, diecast collection. I have everything that I absolutely love and don't really want to get rid of. That's what I have in my cases. That's what I look at. I have my childhood collection in there. That's in my case. That's what I like to look at. Um, so yeah, <sighs> I think I think that's it, man. So yeah. Also, uh, just one thing, man. Um, you know, own your collection, don't let your collection own you. And uh, that's something I learned the hard way a couple of times throughout my collecting life. Um, and I'm a huge collector, I love collecting. Like I said before, I have tons of different collections of things. And uh, I just, from time to time, go through all of them and weed them out. Either sell them, get rid of stuff for free, give them to your friends, donate them to kids, donate them to other charities. And uh, I think that's the best way to go for me. And that's what I've been doing. So, yeah. So that's it, man. Uh, hopefully you all enjoyed this little rant. Or uh, it's just a little topic video I wanted to make. Um, and yeah, uh, it's unbelievable, man. Seven freaking dollars or eleven dollars for a premium Hot Wheels. Which is just a main line with some paint on it. And uh, rubber wheels and a metal base. Um, so, <sighs> all right. 
So once again, I'm sure there will be tons of people this, that misunderstood me, as always. There's a, always one or two. Um, I'm not criticizing collecting. I'm not criticizing collectors. I'm not criticizing any particular uh, community of collectors. I'm in a few collecting communities. And uh, I'm not criticizing anyone. I'm just giving you some thoughts about me, what I'm going through, how I feel about this stuff. And uh, if any of you agree, that's awesome. If you don't agree, that's awesome too, man. And uh, that's that's life. That's the beautiful part about it. Everyone has their own opinion and they can talk about whatever the hell they want. And uh, it's your opinion. This was mine. So hopefully you enjoyed this little uh, talk. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll be back soon with you guys with another video. Uh, I'm still gonna be doing peg hunting videos, like I said before, uh, they're not for me anymore, um, they're for y'all. <laughs> Those of you who are regular subscribers to my channel know all about what it's for y'all means, so I've talked about that a whole bunch of times. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, so um, yeah, I, now whatever I peg hunt, it's for Ukraine, it's to raise money for Ukrainians in Ukraine that are going through a uh, horrific uh, war right now, being invaded by uh, Russia, the fascist state, the recently uh, officially called uh, terrorist state. That's what Russia is, and Putin is a terrorist, and uh, people are dying daily, and uh, that, that also gave me quite a push to um, get rid of my most of my possessions that are not really necessary and uh, auction them off, sell them, and send the money to people that need it because there's no rockets coming my way yet. Uh, you know, no one's trying to kill me, rape me, or uh, torture me in horrific ways, or destroy my home, kill my friends, dogs, animals, uh, whatever. Uh, so yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to bring that down, but it's 2022, it's, you know, November, I don't know, 29th, I think, today. So, uh, if you're watching this a few years from now, you know why I'm talking about that, because we're in the middle of a war right now. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, that, but, yeah, the, the point is that helped me uh, uh, retain my, uh, my whole uh, minimalism beliefs um, and uh, really, really losing a lot of respect for just material things and possessions. They're, they're really not important. And uh, throughout this whole minimalist journey of mine... Um, I've made some really good friends, and uh, to be honest with you, that's a good trade. <laughs> that's a hell of a trade, man. That's a priceless trade. Uh, I've met some people that I respect, people that respect me, uh, people that have my back, I have their back, uh, we have mutual understandings, we have common causes, um, and we believe in peace and love and, uh, you know, the common good of mankind. And uh, that's what I strive for, and uh, that's, I think, people should reevaluate re what they value the most. Uh, you know, the, like, again, don't let the collection own you. Don't let your life be about collecting. Collecting's great, um, hunting's great, all of that stuff's great, but if your everyday life is just about how to get this casting, how to trade this casting, how to sell that, how to go peck hunting, uh, what am I going to do tomorrow, uh, you know, like, there's so many other hobbies you can also do, or help other people, or do whatever, man, um, just don't let your collection, your interests, and what you collect, just occupy your brain every day, because it's, at that point, it's no longer an escape from life, it is your life, and then you'll need an escape from your escape and that just becomes difficult it's like an addiction you know so yeah all right guys uh <laughs> i'm really gonna go this time thank you for uh hearing me out i hope uh again i hope this was valuable i hope this uh, made some of you think about something um about what i was talking about uh hopefully you guys understood where i'm getting at and uh yeah <laughs> that's freaking 12 dollars man $12 freaking Hot Wheels. Um, it should make you think too, man. It should make you think, what are you spending your money on? You buy five of those, how much did you spend? 
<sighs> All right. I'm done. Thank you for watching. Live long and prosper. Hopefully, you're good. Peace and love. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, might as well <clears throat> share a little bit with you in the end here if you're new to my channel. Show you what I was talking about that was behind me. <clears throat> if you watched all the way through, you might as well get a little bit of a payoff. So yeah, these are the castings that I've had since I was a kid. Most of these I had when I was still in Ukraine, so before I was like 11. So I still love all these. They're all great. Some were played with. Some were cherished a lot more. Uh, this is my Back to the Future 164 collection. That's just random Back to the Future stuff. Just acquired over the years. These are... Uh, soviet cars but this is my childhood collection most of these my dad got for me uh yes they were played with uh quite a bit my dad had a real car that he drove around that was just like this blue one so yeah yeah that's from my childhood had them my whole life then i have uh, some customs from friends these are my customs that i made these are all powder coat customs not painted so a lot of a lot, a lot of love went into making these. That's all pretty much that I have left over. Then I have my uh, castings like pop culture, movies, cartoons, also collected over time. And uh, this is what I have left of my uh, Fast and the Furious. Just have my Han right here, and my Brian. They're 124 scale. I stopped collecting 124 altogether. <laughs> That's all I have left. This is my Shelby Lancer that I talked about when I was uh, autocross and street racing. Beautiful car. Love it. Yes, Carol Shelby. Made Dodge Shelby's. Ooh, beautiful turbo car. Really had fun in that. Uh, these are my... <coughs> excuse me. These are the custom... Customs I have not gonna go too deep into it because there's a lot Those are all customs that I got from other customizers right there and then My Mustang collection my favorite Mustangs Some are Hot Wheels. There's a bunch of supers there and uh, There's a bunch of like Johnny Lightning out of world stuff like that these are my Kaido house. Oh wait, those are two Hot Wheels. Uh, I will swap that one. That's my Super. And these are the uh, Mini GT that I talked about. And yes, I have one Chase that I was lucky enough to find. Um, <laughs> there's the star of the show right there. The Countach that I got for $7. Then that's a mainline wheel swapped. Mainline wheel swapped. Alfa Romeo, Mainline, Wheel Swapped, Pantera, and the rest of these are all Fast and the Furious, and that's kind of my main focus, is collecting Fast and the Furious 164 castings, so most of them are Hot Wheels uh, Premium, or I got, if they don't make a Premium but make a Mainline, I Wheel Swap it and it looks good enough. And these are my 118 scales. Once again, I did have way more of these back in the day, but these are the ones I love the most. Uh, they were all in big cases, just like that. And uh, yeah, I used to have, I would say, five times the amount of these. So, a lot. And uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> There's some more Back to the Future stuff. Christopher Lloyd signed that for me. There's the rare hoverboard, Back to the Future. Yes, it's real, official, and it's hovering on some magnets. It's kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, this is some of the leftovers of my uh, action figure collections. Got my spawn. This one I have since I was probably 13 or 14. My Jim Morrison, some Amiibo. I went through a huge Amiibo thing. I love Amiibo. Sold them all. <laughs> so, I also have a little bit of VHS collection. Again, I had a ton of them. That's all I have left here. Just the more important ones. 
uh, customs up here, Mythic Legions. These are all by uh, Retrospect Customs, my good friend Leland. Uh, got some other custom back there, some art toys. And here's that Dragon Zord I told you about. There you go, Rocketeer, Doors, my Fraggle Rock plushies, these are all vintage. Iron Giant over there with Leo and Babu Frick. <laughs> Some other stuff here. Yes, I collect all of the NECA Back to the Future stuff. Some Ukraine stuff here. And of course, Blu-rays, DVDs. Uh, that's some of the stuff going for the Kids in Ukraine drive that I'm doing right now. There's some stuff uh, for the auctions. So yeah, there's a purpose and meaning behind everything in here. And that's it. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys for watching. Sorry about the creaky floor. Um, yeah, hopefully uh, this was fun. I'm really gonna go this time. I always do bonus footage at the end of almost every video. You'll find like, oh, it's done. Then like I come back and show something like a surprise. So yeah. All right. I'm really going to go this time. Peace, guys. Bye. Rock.